So you or someone you know have fallen on hard times and are facing foreclosure. It happens to the best of us, with the majority of the times from situations that are out of our control. Divorce, illness, death, and job loss are some of the reasons that come to mind. I know how it feels. I, too, have fallen on hard times. I can also remember being a kid and, well, losing our family home. I've been there and remember the helping hand that my parents received. My name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a 1,000 houses. And I have extensive experience in working with folks who are facing some hard times and even harder decisions. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter where you are in the foreclosure process. Give me a call, shoot me an email, or stop by youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you. I'm hoping to be your helping hand through this tough situation. Now, it's important to know that your options change depending on how much time you have and where you are in the foreclosure process. You will have a lot more and, frankly, better options available if you have just missed your second mortgage payment compared to having a foreclosure date on your house tomorrow. We are going to talk about all the options available to you shortly, but first, let's make sure we understand the foreclosure process. Remember that not all situations are alike. As an example, your reserved special rights if you're a serviceman and away in active duty, or even if your loan is an FHA loan. If that is the case, then you will have a little more time than a conventional mortgage situation. So the process, know that process. And timelines do vary from state to state. In some states, it's like a foreclosure fast lane compared to other states where the process can give a homeowner a little bit more time. The first step of the foreclosure process is the actual default. This is when a borrower misses their first payment. Every mortgage offers that 15-day grace period with a minimal late fee if it's paid any time from day 16 to the end of the month. At one month, the bank will send a missed payment notice, and the second month of missed payments is when a bank will send a demand letter. I call this the pre-pre foreclosure period. Depending on the bank and the time period, the bank will send a notice to default in between 90 to 120 days of missed payments. At this time, the borrower is in what we call pre-foreclosure. Again, all lenders are different, but typically, a lender will give the borrower another 90 days to cure the loan. If the loan isn't reinstated, then the lender will move to record a notice of trustee with the county. This will schedule the actual date of the foreclosure auction for the property. It's important to know that a property owner has an equitable right of redemption where they can pay off the loan and all accrued fees up to the auction and save the house from being foreclosed on. Now, I've stopped properties being foreclosed just hours before they are to be auctioned off. You want to talk about a nerve-wracking situation. The fees that are owed are not just the missed mortgage payments. A property owner would owe the missed payments, additional interest on the missed payments, all late fees, as well as the attorney fees that have been accrued during the foreclosure process. This is why getting ahead of this situation sooner rather than later can be very beneficial. Let's talk about your options. If you've missed just one or well two payments, then you may be able to be a little creative here. You also have the luxury of all the options available to you. In regards to the creativity, maybe it's a matter of renting out the property or even renting out a room through Airbnb in order to get some additional income to help pay off the mortgage. If it's a situation that is similar to where it's because of an injury where you maybe lost some work and are now back at full strength, then maybe you could ask a friend or family member for a loan to help you get current. This gets harder to accomplish the further you get down that rabbit hole. The next option that most people try to do is a loan modification or forbearance. Understand that these two options are like reapplying for the loan. You have to provide them pay stubs, taxes, budgets, pretty much everything but a blood sample. So if you're unemployed or have gotten in the situation due to a loss of income, then this may not work out in the end for you. You have to re-qualify for the loan. In a loan modification, sometimes you will see a bank decrease in interest rate if they see that you could cure the mortgage and pay the monthly obligation with that new payment. There are two ways a forbearance can work, and one way is much better than the other. Let's say your mortgage payment is $2,000 a month and you are three payments behind. The best way a bank can help a borrower out with a forbearance is adding on the $6,000 plus additional accrued interest and late fees to the end of the mortgage, essentially wiping you clean and allowing you to carry on moving forward at that original payment. The less attractive way is where they take the $6,000 and divide it by 12 to get $500. 
They would then add this $500 to your mortgage payment of $2,000 for a monthly obligation of $2,500 for the next 12 months. This could be tough to swallow when things are already tight. A major negative of loan modification and forbearance options is that the foreclosure process is still ongoing while you're negotiating these. The bank doesn't stop because you've asked for a loan mod or a forbearance. In other words, this isn't buying some time option. If you do not have the income to cover the mortgage because you are still employed as an example, then you are just spinning your wheels and wasting some very valuable time. These two options should also be earlier in the foreclosure process. Think within the first 90 days or so. If you're unable to do a loan mod or forbearance, then it may be time to look at some more serious and tougher decisions in regards to selling the property. This brings us to the option of bankruptcy. But this option is not to be taken lightly. First off is that your credit is affected worse and for longer than a foreclosure. By utilizing a bankruptcy, you will also be paying a higher interest rate premium for the rest of your life. A question they always ask when filling out the application for credit is, have you declared bankruptcy? The moment you check this, they put you in a higher credit risk profile and charge you more for an interest rate. Bankruptcy is on your credit report for 10 years compared to a foreclosure, which is on your credit report for seven years. And in most cases, a bankruptcy actually doesn't save the house. It prolongs how long someone stays in the house, but in the end, the judge can require the sale of a property. Again, it does buy you more time. Think years, but it can cost you a fortune and will ruin your ability to get credit. I personally don't believe bankruptcy is the way to go and no foreclosure is not a good option. A person's better off selling a property. The impacts on the credit are, well, for the short term. And if a person's financial situation improves, then they could be buying a house within the next two years. You have a couple options here when it comes to selling the property. If you have time, then a traditional sale will allow you to maximize the proceeds and could mean that you could walk away with a large check. The sooner you sell, then the less bank fees and attorney fees being calculated into it, and which means more money to you. And this, of course, all depends on how much equity you have in the property. But again, this is only if you have time. If a foreclosure date has been scheduled on your house, then this is not a realistic option for you. If a homeowner is in the ninth hour, then there are really only two options available to them. The first is selling the property to a cash investor. Now, the cash part's very important as you need to know it's a bulletproof sale and that the actual sale will go through. Ensure it is a reputable home buyer as your financial future, it depends on their ability to purchase your own. These buyers only buy homes at a discounted price, but this will at least allow you the option to walk away with something. And the last option is to sell a property subject to. This essentially means where an investor steps in and pays off what is owed in bank payments and plus fees and attorney costs to reinstate the loan. Remember, they can do this all the way up to the auction date. There can be many moving parts to these types of sales where an investor actually holds the house for 60 to 90 days until selling it traditionally or even an agreement where they can hold the loan for years. There is a lot to discuss and be negotiated here. If you're currently doing a subject to sale, then I highly recommend you give me a call to talk about your situation. The benefits of selling a house through any of these measures are that it's free for the homeowner in the sense of, well, the cash or subject to sales. Yes, you would pay a realtor fee when selling traditionally, but you've maximized the sales price and thereby the amount of equity you have in the property. The realtor fee is nothing in that case. Another benefit is that there is no foreclosure on your record, so your credit is more quickly repaired. And here's a huge one. There's no deficiency judgment. Deficiency judgment is where the bank can actually go back to the property owner after the foreclosure and recoup any losses, even years after the foreclosure event. So what is it that a person should not do if they are facing foreclosure? They shouldn't do nothing. Doing nothing is the worst thing a person could do. A property owner needs to be proactive in this situation. The longer they wait, then the worse the outcome for them. And this includes hiding from the bank. Pick up the phone when the bank calls. Tell them you're still living in the house and that you are not able to make a payment. If you don't talk to them and tell them that you are still living in the house, then they will move your foreclosure up to the urgent pile and foreclose on you quicker. A house being occupied is a way of insurance for the bank. This means that the utilities are on and that no one is going to come in and vandalize the property. You also do not want to move out. If a bank figures out property is vacant, then they are going to rush that foreclosure. And why would you want to move out? Stay in the property for as long as you can and avoid paying rent. And if 
you're foreclosed on, then don't move out. Wait. The new owner or bank will come knocking. They will first ask you to leave voluntarily. Don't do that. They will eventually offer you cash for your keys. Basically, they will pay you to leave the property as that is a lot less expensive than going through the courts in order to get rid of possession. Do not make partial payments. The person on the phone will handle you to do this. Do not do it. This will not slow down or delay the process. If foreclosure is inevitable, then hold on to that money. And one last thing, know that foreclosure is very public. Notices are put on doors, names are put online, and in newspapers announcing a foreclosure. And worst of all, Zillow will also list this as a pre-foreclosure. The Zillow aspect is like putting a loudspeaker out to friends, family members, and coworkers. It's so annoying and it's just plain wrong. Again, my name is Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. I hope that you found this video helpful should you or anyone you know be facing foreclosure. As I mentioned earlier, I'm here to help. I can offer you advice, help you with recommendations of professionals that can help you, and I can even purchase your property. I'm here to help you whether you're in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country. Your location doesn't matter. I can help either way. My information is in the description below, or you can go to youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your info, and then we'll reach out to you right away. Again, don't hesitate reaching out with questions. I'm looking forward to helping you.